Well, good morning, GOCC. How's everybody doing this morning? Ah, just like the first crowd. Still asleep, huh? Let's try that one more time. You climbed out of bed, and you came to church for what? To worship Jesus? Amen. So how's everybody doing this morning? I think he likes a cheerful worshiper too. Let's stand to our feet and let's worship him because he is Jesus. Thank you. 
Amen. Aren't you thankful for Jesus? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we're going to sing about that right now.
my alarm clock went off 500 times. Sometimes you just have to go. Sing it with me. The old my soul part. Oh, my soul, remember who you're singing to. And oh, my soul, remember who you're singing to. CC family, welcome out to your Sunday morning worship service. Hey, if you're a first time guest with us here today, we are thrilled that you made the decision to come worship with us today. We hope when you leave here today that you leave with your hearts full. A couple of quick announcements before we take up our offering. First off, uh, mark your calendars for July the 2nd at 6 p.m. Uh, that's next Sunday evening at 6 p.m. We're going to be doing our July the 4th cookout celebration here at the church. Uh, there's a sign up sheet back at the Connection Center. Uh, also, if you're interested in bringing a side dish or a dessert, see Selena after the service so you can let her know that uh, what you're going to be bringing and that you're going to be bringing something. Uh, also, be in prayer for our missions team. They are leaving uh, shortly, if they haven't already left. Uh, they are leaving as we speak uh, to go to Stearns, Kentucky this week uh, to be the hands and feet of Christ. So be in prayer for them this week as they, uh, they go out into the fields uh, for the harvest. Uh, also, Next Steps new members class will be next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. So if you're interested in learning more about the church, if you're interested in joining the church, uh, that class will be next Sunday morning at 10. Pastor Greg will talk uh, a little more about that. Uh, and also, just a quick reminder, there will be no Wednesday night services June 28th or July the 5th. We'll, we'll uh, resume on July the 12th. So that's youth or uh, Wednesday night services for the next two weeks. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and we'll take up our offering. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity to be in your house. Lord, thank you for the rain that you sent us this week for the, the crops. Lord, thank you for the sun that you're bringing back out to dry us all back out. Lord, thank you for this church and for putting us here in this community. Lord, we pray a very special prayer for our missions team as they go out into the field this week. Lord, I pray that you would keep them safe, that you would give them boldness and strength and endurance. Uh, to do your to you to do your work, go with us now. Guide us. Be in this service. We love you. We worship you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. first service, he must be a really faithful man to thank the Lord for all the rain that we got. So I thought we was back in the middle of 40 days and 40 nights. Whew. Hey, y'all take just a minute to stand to your feet. Say something to somebody. Welcome somebody. Greet somebody. Make some noise.
starts to praise your name. Every day I will praise you. Great is the Lord. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of your glorious splendor. They tell of your power. They celebrate your abundant goodness. 
So, we joyfully sing of your righteousness. Two, I got, all right. Well, good morning, Grown Oaks. Good to see all of you in God's house today. Uh, Good to be back with you uh, this morning. I spent a couple days at North Myrtle Beach soaking up the sun in 85 degree weather. And you come back to Reedsville and it's 65 degrees and raining and the wind's blowing. Wish I was back at the beach. But hey, it's always good to be in God's house with y'all. Hey, just a a quick announcement. Uh, Next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, we'll be having our Next Steps new membership class. Uh, If you are interested, perhaps you've been coming to Growing Oaks for a while and you want to know a little bit more about our congregation, the Next Steps class is, is a great next step for you to learn a little bit more about who we are as Growing Oaks. But also, if you are interested in membership in Growing Oaks Community Church, uh, you have got to complete that new membership class. Uh, As always, there is no obligation for you to join the church. Uh, You can certainly make a a decision at a later date if you want to come and consider it and uh, make that decision as perfectly fine as well. So come and join us next week at 10 a.m. Hey, if you've got your Bibles with you, we'll be in Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, we'll look at verses 1 through 9 this morning. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. And before we read there, let us pray. God, as we come to the preaching and teaching of your word, God, we thank you for this ancient text, yet so relevant for our lives today. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would open our hearts, open our minds, open our souls, that God, we may not only take in the preaching and proclamation of your word, but that God, we would be doers of it. So God, we just pray for your Holy Spirit to come and to minister to us at this time. We pray this and we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. When Max Wilkins was a little boy, he was always a little bit afraid to go and visit his great Aunt Ruth. She lived in this old, huge, three-story home, and when you would walk on the floor, the boards would creak, and it sounded like an old haunted house, and it scared him. Well, then came the day when he had to spend the night at his Aunt Ruth's house. So he climbed the stairs and went into the third floor bedroom. And when he got into bed, there was a man standing in the corner. And it terrified him. Because he knew that if he made a run for it, he would easily reach out and grab him. So Max decided that the thing he needed to do was to just lay in bed and pretend he was asleep. So he laid there all night Stiff as a board, one eye open, and if the man came towards him, he was going to make a run for it. Well, as the sun came up that morning, and as the room got brighter and brighter, there was the man standing in the corner. It was a coat rack with a hat on top of it. He had spent the entire night scared over something that was just A creation of his own imagination. Let's just be honest. Of the things that you and I fear in life, isn't it really just a hat on top of a coat rack? How many of the things do you and I, that we fear in life, are nothing more than a creation of our own imagination? Well, thankfully, Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, is going to have some words to speak to us today about that very issue, fear. So let's look at the first five verses of Joshua chapter 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the, notice this right here, the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. 
I will never leave you nor forsake you. One of the great figures in the Bible is Joshua. And when Moses died, Joshua became the leader of God's people, Israel. You see, Moses had led God's people through the wilderness for 40 years. And the reason why Moses had led God's people, Israel, through the wilderness for 40 years is because God had judged Israel's fear. You see, 38 years before Joshua chapter 1, the Israelites had been here before. They are at the Jordan River, and they are about to cross it and go in and take possession of the land of Canaan, the land that God had promised to them. So Moses sent 12 spies into the land of Canaan. And when they came back to Moses and the people of Israel, they reported that the land of Canaan was a fruitful and prosperous land. But 10 of those 12 spies also saw the giant people that were in the land. The mighty armies that were in the land. The fortified cities that were in the land. And their hearts wilted from fear. And ten of those spies pronounced a cancer of fear that went throughout the whole nation of Israel, so much so to the point that they wanted to stone Moses to death and go back to Egypt as slaves. I mean, think about these people who are standing here at the Jordan River. They were slaves in Egypt. They had saw God's mighty hand. They had saw themselves all the plagues that God had brought against the Egyptians. They saw God's great hand of deliverance. These people had actually seen God part the waters of the Red Sea. These people had walked right through those waters on dry ground to their freedom. But now... On the verge of going in, fear has gripped their hearts and they want to go back to Egypt as slaves. Well, guess what? Joshua had been one of the 12 spies. In fact, there were two spies who also went into the land who believed that God had given it to them and now it was time for them to go in and take possession of it. So here is Joshua 38 years later, a man who had been in the land of Canaan, a man who had saw the giants, a man who had saw the mighty militaries, a man who had saw the great fortified cities, and guess what? Those three things are still there. Do you know what I think might be going on with Joshua? I think a little bit of fear has gripped his heart. I think fear has creeped into his mind. Put yourself into Joshua's shoes. He is leading a group of people who used to be slaves in Egypt and have wandered through the wilderness for 40 years. And now they're going to go into the land and engage in hand-to-hand combat with people who are giants, who are well-fortified cities, who are very strong armies. This is real hand-to-hand combat that we're talking about. With knives and arrows and javelins and swords. This is real warfare. Where blood gets spilled. Arms get severed. And yes, people get killed. And perhaps it is because of this fear that has gripped Joshua's heart that he is hesitant about leading God's people into the promised land. And it is probably because of that fear that God is going to give Joshua some words of encouragement in verses 6 through 9. We pick up in verse 6. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your heart, 
from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. God is giving these words of encouragement to Joshua that he cannot fear, that he must lead by faith and lead God's people into the promised land. Three times God says to Joshua, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous. God is encouraging Joshua so that his faith will be stronger than his fear. So let me say this about fear. Fear is not the problem because fear actually comes naturally to us. Fear is hardwired into our brains. You see, God put fear, healthy fear, into our brains to prevent us from doing foolish and stupid and harmful things that could have negative consequences. Let me illustrate it like this. One of the things that I enjoy doing is I like to hike mountains. I don't know what it is about being up on top of a mountain, but the views are incredible. And not only that, for some strange reason, I just think you feel closer to God. So one of the things that I like to do maybe once or twice a year is I will go and I will hike to the top of Hanging Rock. But when I am up on the top of that cliff, fear tells me don't get too close to the edge. Because if you fall off, you are either going to be killed or seriously injured. You see, that is good, healthy rational fear. And God has hardwired that good, rational, healthy fear into our brains. So let me say this today about irrational and unhealthy fears that keep us from being obedient to God. Because a lot of times it is unhealthy, irrational fears that keep us from living the abundant life that Jesus desires for us to live. It is those unhealthy, irrational fears that keep us from being the people of God that he created us to be. So here is what we need to know about faith and fear. Here is when faith happens. Faith happens when you put God between you and your circumstance. Faith happens when you put God between you and your circumstance. Fear happens, when, faith happens when you are here, when God is here, and your circumstance is over here. Faith happens when you put God between you and your circumstance. So when does fear happen? Here is when fear happens. Fear happens when you put your circumstance between you and God. Fear happens when you put your circumstance between you and God. Fear happens when you are here, your circumstance is here, and God is over here. Fear happens when you allow a circumstance in your life to create a wedge between you and God. And God. Is there something in your life right now that is causing you to fear or to worry or to be anxious about or to be stressed over? Do you know why you are fearing? Why you are worrying? Why you are stressed? Why are you are anxious? It's probably because you have put your circumstance between you and God. Is it something with your finances? 
Is it something with your health? Is it something at your work? Are you worried and fearful over things that we see happening in our nation? Perhaps it's a challenge that God is calling you to do, to step out in obedience. But the circumstance is coming between you and God, and you haven't acted in obedience. If there's something in your life right now that is causing you fear, or it's causing you worry, or it's causing you stress, here is what I want you to do. I want you to put God between you and your circumstance. That, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is living by faith. So here is what I want to ask you today. How do you overcome fear? How do you overcome fear? Let me boil it down to one word for you, and it's not courage. How do you overcome fear? Here's the one word that I want to boil it down for you this morning. Action. Action. How do you overcome fear? Action. You do the thing that you are fearing. Are you afraid to fly? Then get on a plane. Are you afraid to speak in public? Speak in public. Because guess what? I have been preaching for 16 years, and guess what? I still fear public speaking. But I get into the pulpit, and I do it anyway. Maybe for you, it's time for a career change. How do you overcome that fear? Send out your resume. Is there someone that you need to have a tough and honest conversation with? But fear is keeping you from doing so? Have the conversation. How about this one? Are you afraid to pray in public? I kid you not. At the first two churches I pastored, at the end of the very first Wednesday night Bible study and prayer meeting, I had people come to me and say, Pastor, don't ever call on me to pray. Do you know what those chickens should have come to me and said? Pastor, call on me to pray. Do you see how unhealthy and irrational fear keeps us from becoming the people God created us to be? Is there something that you've been wanting to have a spiritual conversation with, but fear has gotten in the way? A neighbor? A co-worker? A friend? A family member? Have the conversation. Is there someone that you've been wanting to invite to church? Then cross the lawn and make the invitation. How many of us are afraid to give financially to the work of God's church because we are afraid that we won't have enough? Here's my encouragement for you. Write the check. Perhaps some of us, God's been convicting us about leading a life group. But fear's been keeping us from obedience. My encouragement for you today is lead the group. Is there something that God has been challenging you to step out on faith and do, but fear has been preventing you from doing so? Do it. If we are living in fear, then we are not living by faith. And let me say this. I am not guaranteeing you success when you step out on faith and conquer that fear. Because you might have a conversation with someone about receiving Jesus as their Lord and Savior. 
and they might tell you that you're an idiot. They might tell you that they can't believe in a loving God who allows innocent children to die of starvation. They might tell you they're an atheist. You might invite people to church, and guess what? They ain't never going to set foot in a church ever. That ain't the point. Success is not the point. Obedience is. Think about this. Babe Ruth is recognized as one of the greatest home run hitters of all time. In his career, Babe Ruth hit 714 home runs. Would any of you like to guess how many times he struck out? 1,330. Babe Ruth had more strikeouts than he ever hit home runs, but guess what? He got in the batter's box and swung the bat. How about Henry Ford? He went bankrupt five times before he hit it big with the Ford Motor Company. And how about one more? How about Michael Jordan? According to a statistician by the name of Steve Harvey, Michael Jordan made 146 game-winning shots in his college and professional career. Would any of you like to guess how many shots he actually took? 946. Michael Jordan, in his career, missed 800 game-winning shots. And according to the statistics, he only made 15% of his game-winning shots. And how do we remember him? As one of the greatest basketball players ever. Do you know why? Because Michael Jordan wasn't afraid to take the shot. How much of the abundant life are you missing out on because fear is keeping you from realizing it and experiencing it? If you want to experience things you have never experienced before, then you are going to have to do some things you have never done before. If you want to experience some new things in Christ Jesus, then guess what? You're going to have to go to some places that you have never gone before. It is often said, if you keep doing what you've always been doing, then guess what? You're going to keep getting what you've always been getting. Life in Christ is about adventure. Life in Christ is about discovery. And you cannot let your fears keep you from doing and going and experiencing an abundant life in Christ Jesus. On the evening of January 30th, 1956, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was preaching at First Baptist Church, Montgomery, Alabama. And right in the middle of his sermon, someone came and told him that his home had been firebombed. So Martin Luther King Jr. left right in the middle of his sermon. And he went home and he comforted his wife and his daughter who were shaken. Later that night, as Dr. King sat at his kitchen table alone, he heard a still small voice speak to him and say, Martin, do not be afraid. Reflecting on that experience, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote these words. You may be 38 years old, as I happen to be, and one day some great opportunity stands before you and calls you to stand up for some great principle, some great issue, some great and you refuse to do it because you are afraid. You refuse to do it because you want to live longer. Or you fear losing your job. Or you are afraid you will be criticized. Or lose your popularity. 
or you're afraid somebody will stab you or shoot you or bomb your house, so you refuse to take the stand. Well, you may go and live until you are 90, but you are just as dead at 38 as you would be at 90. And the cessation of breathing in your life is only a belated announcement of an earlier death of your spirit. When opportunity comes knocking at your door, what do you see? The obstacles? The overwhelming odds? The challenges? The what ifs? When divine opportunity comes knocking at your door, what do you see? The what ifs? The obstacles? The overwhelming odds? God said to Joshua three times, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous is not a suggestion. It is a command. I believe God is looking for Christians who are people of faith. People who will be strong and courageous. People who will overcome the fears and step out and live in obedience. And you know what else I think God is looking for? Churches who are strong and courageous. Churches who are not afraid to step out on faith and to take a risk and to do great and wonderful things for God. Is it time for you to face the fears? My challenge for you this morning is that I want you to resolve in your heart that you will not allow fear to keep you from becoming the person that God created you to be. My challenge and my encouragement for you today is to be strong and courageous and to step out on faith and to live obedient for the Lord Jesus Christ, no matter what it is or where it is that he is calling you to go. Face the fear. And when you do, I think that you will discover that the thing that you were fearing was nothing more than a hat on top of a coat rack. Let us pray. God, we thank you for these words of encouragement from God's word. And Father, I just pray for the power of your Holy Spirit to touch our soul today that we may be strong and courageous. Perhaps there's some of us here this morning who right now at this very moment are weighed down by worry, stress, anxiety, fear. Perhaps you're here this morning and the reason why you're worrying, the reason why you're anxious, the reason why you're stressed is because you have put your circumstance between you and God. Would you just let the Holy Spirit search your heart today? To uncover that fear, to uncover that worry. 
And would you allow the Holy Spirit to remove the fear and to give you faith. Trust to believe that God will make a way. Perhaps you're here this morning Maybe there's something in your life where God has been calling you to step out on faith and to follow him and to do a ministry or to serve in some capacity. Would you pray today for the Holy Spirit to give you the courage and the strength to act in obedience and however it might be, that God is calling you to follow Him. Perhaps you're here today and you've never made the decision to believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I encourage you to put fear aside and to believe in faith. Believe today in who Jesus was and is. Believe today that Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus died on the cross for your sin because you're a sinner. And that is why we are cut off from heaven. Would you believe today that Jesus arose from the dead to forgive our sin? and to defeat sin, death, and the grave. Take that step of faith this morning, if you never have, and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Surrender your life to Him and live for Him in obedience. My brother or sister, if you made that decision today, would you please come and see me after church today? I would love to speak with you further about what it means to have the gift of eternal life in the name of Jesus. And God, I just pray as we bring this service of worship to a close. God, I just pray that your blessing would be upon each one. God, I pray for your goodness. I pray for your grace. I pray for your face to shine upon each one. God, may you bless our marriages. God, may you bless our church. God, may you bless our families. And God, we pray that you would bless our nation with your goodness, your grace, your mercy. God, may we experiencing, experience your love and your joy. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. We pray this and we ask it. In the great and saving name of Jesus. Amen. Let us stand as we conclude our service of worship.
invite cards as you go to the grocery store, restaurants as you're out and about. This is a great way to invite people to church and just put one of these into someone's hands. Got our worship time on it. Uh, location, anything like that. So pick some of those up and invite some folks to church. Hey, God loves you. Uh, good being in church today as we get here today to worship Jesus. Hope and pray you all have a great week. God bless you and remember to pray for our missions team as they serve in Kentucky this week. God bless you. Have a great week.